Second NDYAG lasers. Who wants to be thinking about subatomic flashes of time when you're lying shirtless on the dermatologist's desk waiting to have your indiscretion zapped? Starling, the receptionist, recognizes me from the beginning of this journey. Young, visibly tattooed. Probably in her early 20s, just out of college. She's not the type that I would have pegged to be working the front desk at a doctor's office. The slight blush and the quickly downcast eyes tells me she's attracted, even if she doesn't know it yet. <laughs> Dr. Chong, though, himself, he's more my type. This is it. Starling asks me, gesturing for me to take a seat. Um, I think so, I say. Uh, I mean, Dr. Chong is good, but this shit hurts. She giggles and blushes again. I smile at her, and I take a seat. When I got my first tattoo at the age of 18, it felt less like rebellion and, and more like, you know, the, the relief that comes from embracing your fate. I mean, I'd known I was going to get tatted as, as when I was a kid, and once I turned 18, I did. Even with the coding tabs I took ahead of time, you know, the, the pain, <laughs> the pain took me by surprise. Five minutes in, and I, I was almost passed out. I was <laughs> hyperventilating. The tattoo artist stopped, told me to breathe, and had me sit with my head between my knees <laughs> until the black veil surrounding my peripheral vision disappeared. After a time, I got semi-used to the sensation kind of like being eaten alive by a sewing machine one needle at a time. <laughs> and then an hour later, we were done. I looked down at the black spots on my bicep, curlicues and blobs from the row painting that I liked, and I was repulsed by the bloody, inky mess under the plastic white bandage. You're dressed for life, the tattoo artist said. Sometimes you hear that ink is addictive. And while I liked my tattoo after it healed, I was not signing up for another hour and a half of ridiculous pain. And until I met Nick, I'd have laughed if anybody brought it up. <laughs> we met at the immigration center of all places, getting our visas renewed. He was the brightest thing in that colorless office lobby with its dirty gray tiles and its plastic molded seats that were intended for people a foot shorter than us. You're staring. He said, if you didn't want people to look, you wouldn't have gotten them done, I said. Fair enough, he said. He had a five-pointed star tattoo on each side of his neck. His forearms swirled with dragons and flames and strands of green ivy. 
falling in lunatic love with a man with more tattoos and bare skin was not something I would have expected of myself. Six months later, and he had talked me into getting a pair of stars similar to his, not, not on the neck, though I drew the line at the neck, but, you know, a star, and each shoulder blade, neural blobs on the bicep, but I was increasingly looking like a weather math or an astrology <laughs> chart, and with this in mind, I decided to embrace the cliché, and I got my zodiac signs done, Chinese and Western. <laughs> when you live in Hong Kong and you're in mad love with a half Chinese Australian hipster thug hybrid, <laughs> this kind of insanity makes sense. <laughs> turned to unflushable shit after he moved in with me. <laughs> it wasn't so much the non-stop extracurricular shagging so much as the lying about it. He fell in love with a handsome Nigerian grad student whose ink was his skin was so dark that ink would have been pointless. <laughs> Nick said he loved me as well, still and always. We'll get a tattoo together, he said, and we did. His initials on my left ass cheek and mine on his right. <laughs> He didn't have much real estate left. <laughs> you know, sometimes relationships persist not because they're healthy, but because uh, getting out of them would entail conversations you just rather not have with friends and family. You know, I, I couldn't decide what would be worse, you know, the breakup conversation itself or the flood of what the fuck emails I'd get as soon as my Facebook relationship status turned to single. So I stayed, and I grumbled and lied to everyone around me. <laughs> Started drinking as well at night when Nick was with his Nigerian grad student who he didn't love as much as me, but spent more time with. <laughs> we had a threesome once. <laughs> the worst part is how much I enjoyed it. <laughs> I got her ink done, random black work in a flash, from tattoo shop walls, photo books. Maybe I thought I could hold on to him, you know, if I just became more like him. You couldn't make him just meet on the shit salary that he earned at the tuition center where he worked. His tattoos were starting to scare the parents. <laughs> private tuition on the side never panned out. I I mean, he spoke Chinese, but he looked so much like a thug from the triads that the aunties and grannies didn't want him around. <laughs> One afternoon, I came back, and he was gone. Simple as that. Taking his clothes and some of mine. <laughs> no note, but it didn't matter. I knew immediately what he'd done. I didn't really want to know what he had to say about it either. Knowing that I couldn't get back the time 
and the money that I wasted on him, I, I decided to do the next best thing. I decided to erase him from my life, one tattoo at a time. <laughs> nah, this will hurt, huh? Dr. Chong said for the first time. But you won't hurt for long. <laughs> Something told me that Dr. Chong had seen cases like mine before, cases where what was being erased was deeper than the ink in the skin. Now here I sat, my regrets and I, waiting. Dr. Chong and Starling, I think about all, all the things, including my lines. <laughs> I dread the blistering burn, the pain that lidocaine ointment takes the edge off of, but doesn't ever take away. And the sense that something's gone. There will always be shadows in the darkness where Nick used to be. Souvenirs in my skin to remind me of Nick and his ink. The door opens, and Starling motions for me to go in. Thank you. <laughs>